told them it would take more than that to keep you down. Welcome back, Commander. Hello Commander, as always I am Cosmic and finally we have the sequel to XCOM Enemy Unknown in the form of XCOM 2 which was developed by Firaxis Games and published by 2K. Now for those who don't know what XCOM is, it's essentially a science fiction themed turn based strategy game with roguelike elements that has now had a long running franchise dating back to 1994. XCOM has always maintained a loyal following and its games are well known for their difficulty and Iron Man modes. Firaxis Games rebooted the franchise in 2012 with XCOM Enemy Unknown, which received critical acclaim as well as an expansion and spin-off in the form of the Bureau. Now XCOM has been so influential with its theme, tone and mechanics that many similar games are often referred to as XCOM clones, creating a subgenre of games similar to what was accomplished by the 1980 game. Rogue. Now I'm not going to be talking too much about the story as I don't want to give away any spoilers. The game itself is set 20 years after XCOM Enemy Unknown and after the valiant fight you put up against the alien invaders you still lost against overwhelming forces. Human politicians, as always, lined up to broker a peace agreement, otherwise known as surrender, and thus the Advent administration was created. Now, however, you return to take the fight back to Advent, though this time it isn't a war. You're not defending the planet. Instead, you're trying to take it back. You're resisting an occupying force and trying to stop the mysterious Avatar project. When you first play the game, I do recommend playing the tutorial not only because it's a good refresher into XCOM as well as introducing you to the new mechanics of the game but it also has a really good story point and it really does set the scene and tone for what's been happening in the past 20 years as well as your introduction and where your character's been. Now I first wanted to start with character creation. The level of customization for your soldiers far exceeds that of the previous XCOM game which is a major plus. You can customise existing characters or create brand new ones using the character pool on the main menu. There's plenty to customise from hair and facial scars to weapon patterns and sunglasses. A major part of XCOM has always been about investing yourself into your squad and really feeling the loss of when one of them bites the dust. That sense of loss, especially when a character has been leveled and customised and really invested time invested into, is something that XCOM players know only too well. It's nice to see that the emotional investment players acquire in their characters has been deepened with the amount of customised options available here and more in the way in the form of DLC in the future. As you can tell from the characters alone, the game is a significant graphical improvement upon the last. However, it's no Witcher 3. Which leaves me wondering why the hell this game runs so bad. The game is completely unoptimized to the point that getting a consistent frame rate is nigh on impossible. It's clear that the game was not optimized before launch and it certainly needs a big optimization patch as soon as possible. Due to the unoptimization of the game, it just runs into a lot of graphical issues including animation bugs, camera bugs, clipping and it even affects the actual gameplay in terms of the turn time. It really makes the loading time between each turn horrendously long for no apparent reason. What I really like so far about XCOM 2 is the design philosophy that Firaxis have put in place. What they've done is they've taken the core of XCOM Enemy Unknown and then improved upon it. The game has plenty of new mechanics, yet it still feels and plays almost the same. The first major change to the game is the base building system. The base building system in Enemy Unknown was a source of great frustration for me. I didn't like the connection system which forced you to not only build a certain way, but it forced you to progress a certain way by having optimal builds and if you didn't use the builds that were optimised then you would struggle when it came to the end game. In XCOM 2 your base is the Avenger. Instead of a dank underground bunker you get a mobile repurposed alien transport ship. 
Base building has completely changed and been heavily streamlined. In some say it has been gutted, I wouldn't go that far, but it's definitely been streamlined. You only have to build each facility once, but you must assign staff to the facility to make it operational. Now, while it doesn't have the depth I certainly would like to it, the base building system this time round doesn't feel as contrived and it gives you a lot more freedom to proceed and progress how you wish in terms of what you want to focus on. If you want to build the proving grounds to make items, you can do that first. If you want to wait and build the silabs first, it's up to you. It doesn't force you down any direct route. There are various facilities to build that will allow you access to all kinds of items, weapons, armor, and upgrades. Once you have researched a technology, it will give you the ability to build that technology in another the facility such like as I mentioned the proving grounds or the workshop now there's a lot more variety to the tech that you have access to this time round including several armors and weapons that you can only build one at a time or you can even research experimental armor or experimental ammo over and over and it comes up with different things each time now the variety of everything from consumables to weapons is much improved I still feel that there could have been a lot more variety however there's a good amount in there not only this but weapons are also attached with upgrades which are then looted from enemies so there's a little loot system in the game and I love the idea of a loot system in XCOM and the upgrades themselves are very powerful and are really useful but again it lacks a lot of variety and I feel the loot system was kind of tacked on or at best it just wasn't fully fleshed out in any sense of the word. Now one thing that has been massively improved in terms of the mechanics is the world map. Gone are the old and irritating council, civilian panic and doomsday systems. As you start your game you'll only have access to one region. You'll have to make contact with several local resistances to open up new regions, which in turn unlocks that area for missions and income. The overall objective of the game is to stop the Avatar project, which I won't talk about, but it works very similar to the old Doomsday Timer. The difference is that you can actively push it back and by taking down advent facilities and completing various missions. You can even run the risk of ignoring it completely for a while and allow it to fill up so you can pursue other things like gathering supplies and upgrading your base and troops and then take the fight later on in the doomsday clock. The game doesn't force you down a linear progression, which is a really nice touch. It allows you to make your own priorities and your own goals. The other major mechanic of the world map are the dark events, which are essentially the actions that your enemy is taking against you. Each will have an effect, such as the enemy gaining reinforcements on every mission for a month, or a UFO hunting down the Avenger. On occasion, you'll be given a selection of guerrilla operations to take part in, which will then stop one dark event, but you can only do one, meaning that you have to make a tactical decision on which dark event will hurt you the most and put a stop to that one while taking the other two debuffs, essentially. Now, there are several types of missions with a variety of objectives including hacking terminals, defending locations, saving civilians, your run of the mill search and destroy, all that good stuff. The fact that the developers have kept the idea that you're in the resistance, that you're using guerrilla warfare in almost every aspect of the game design from mission objectives down to core mechanics is great from both a mechanical and a narrative standpoint. Every mission you go on doesn't break the mould of the story, which is something that's pretty rare to see in a game like this. When it comes down to the actual combat, what's different about it is that it's coming from a completely different perspective. You are insurgents. Your squad is now the hunters, not the aliens anymore. The biggest addition to these mechanics comes in the form of the concealment mode. Most missions will now start with your entire squad being undetected, allowing you to freely move and cover distance quickly at the very start. You become visible if you get seen by the enemy by stepping into their area of sight on a detection tile, or some of the actions that you can take. So if you attack, you're going to be detected. If you break a window, you're going to be detected. The This allows that basically the bugbear of the first game 
to no longer be an issue. You can now easily move up to the objective on a map quickly compared to the baby steps that you used to have to take in Enemy Unknown, which became very laborious. The groups of enemies still exist, but they're no longer static and just waiting around for you to discover them. Instead, enemy groups now actively take part. They patrol the area, which not only keeps the game engaging, but it makes sense thematically and makes it feel more like a living environment. This being said, the core of the combat remains very much of the same as it was before. Cover is a must. The aim system has been improved to stop both impossible shots and silly misses that were infamous in the original, but they do happen from time to time still. Soldiers have a great number of abilities to gain as they progress, with some really interesting skills, which adds a lot of tactical depth, and there's a lot more variety when it comes to the classes. The pl there's plenty of soldier classes, like the new ranger class, which carries a sword for close combat, and you can even complete the game without unlocking classes like the Psy Operatives. Now the enemy variety is also a lot better this time round. There are really some tough and powerful foes to face, each with unique attack patterns and tactics, such as the Vipers who can not only poison you, but they can also bind a soldier by wrapping around them, causing damage over time and disabling completely. Or there's the Faceless, who essentially is a shapeshifter and takes the form as a civilian and as you get close to thinking you're saving the civilian it will then change in this giant monster. It, there's a lot of stuff in there that's really fun, really engaging and there's some really tough old enemies in there. One of the things that I was most impressed with this time round was the level design. Levels are not only better structured but they feel more spacious, they have more flaws than they did before. This not only adds more options for tactics but it allows a greater freedom within the combat itself it allows you more options it gives you more space to play around with for example you can have a sniper on the third floor of a building and all your other units on the opposite side of the map surrounding an enemy and it's all very satisfying well laid out and fun to look at i think overall what firaxis have accomplished with the sequel is fantastic they have improved upon a winning formula Barring the huge performance issues that there are currently, there's actually very little to complain about and the game has a ton of replayability. It's a fantastic game that shows you how good a turn-based strategy game can be. The fact that the developers have also allowed modding and the game has full Steam Workshop support will keep the game running for a long time to come. It is a true gem of a game and certainly needs to be picked up. Hopefully the performance issues will be ironed out as quickly as possible and people can get destroyed on legend mode with a constant 60 FPS. And that is my review of XCOM 2. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time.